Hey, welcome to Sue Rogers Unedited. I'm Sue Rogers. We are going to touch base today a little bit about this lovely thing I've been learning more about. It's called perimenopause. <laughs> By lovely, I mean, you guys, it's bullshit. Check this out. So for women, for about 10 years before you actually hit menopause, there's this time frame called perimenopause. If you've never heard about it, here's gonna be a little intro into it because I'm still learning more about it myself. Um, some of my fellow ladies my age, we've kind of been discussing this and it's not something people really tell you about, but basically it's the reverse of puberty. Cool, huh? Do you remember how fun puberty was? Like, so cool. Like, when we started growing boobs and then hormones fluctuation as your body get it, was getting ready to start having a period and then, oh joy, having periods. And, and just when you think your body is like in the swing of doing all that, it starts to do the reverse in preparation of menopause. Like, what the fuck? Being a female is crazy wild, but also really freaking cool in what our bodies are capable of doing. So some of the things that I've been reading about that um, can kind of clue you into whether or not uh, perimenopause is happening to you. And once I read some of these lists, and of course the lists all vary and not everyone's gonna have the same symptoms of anything going on, but the things from the lists are your, your periods change. So maybe you're having like worse periods, heavier periods. Um, maybe they're more often. Maybe they're coming less consistently. Lucky you if that's you. Um, spotting in between periods. Now that one is not cool because the only time that my body has ever done any spotting in between periods was when I was going through my years of actually being pregnant. And like the couple of times in my life, well, there's three times that I was pregnant but sometimes having spotting before my period, like a week or so before would happen with being pregnant. And so all of a sudden having random, random spotting coming back up. <laughs> um, and my husband is at a vasectomy. So like not really an option for me to be pregnant, but when that's ingrained in your brain from the years of trying to get pregnant, all of a sudden spotting freaks you the F out. Uh, okay, so spotting, changes in your period, uh, new acne. Like the last six months or so, I could not figure out what the hell was going on with my face because I was having all these freaking cheek breakouts where I've knock on wood, well, it doesn't matter now, but I, in my lifetime, I've had like forehead acne. I've had like the hormonal area of the face, chin around the mouth acne. Um, but not really ever on my cheeks. And so that one was... I couldn't figure out what it was. Like I hadn't really changed my diet. My diet's pretty clean and pretty consistent. I hadn't really changed my skincare routine. And even weirder is that I get consistent facials. I change my pillowcase once a week, thanks to my friend, esthetician friend Katie, who posts all the time reminders to do it. But yeah, so I couldn't figure out what the heck, why was I breaking out on my cheeks all of a sudden? Well, new acne on the cheeks. <laughs> Yeah, that was on one of the lists for sure that I read, but just new acne in general, because guess what? It's your hormones. You've got this new fluctuation of hormones going on in the body, which can directly <sighs> cause breakouts. Um, chin hair. So like coarse hairs, you know, like the old, like my grandma used to have a bunch of them. And like ladies weren't doing like shaving or, um, electrolysis or any kind of like fancy hair removal stuff back in the day but um that's something that can put or even just like coarser hairs on the face why why does nature do these like sick cruel things to us why do dudes all of a sudden get massive hairy backs as they age like it's really messed up and it probably served some purpose back in the day evolutionary wise uh so if somebody knows <laughs> why please enlighten me but it seems like a very sick cruel joke that that happens to us as we age what else was on this list um anxiety depression and 
you guys, my husband is a really good driver. I've never been really nervous. Like every once in a while, he, he used to drive a lot faster. It used to freak me out. But lately I've been super jumpy in the car. And even with my son, who's a pretty good driver, like I've gotten an extra jumpy in the car. I trust them. I don't trust all the dumbasses driving on the roads with us all the time. But I've been extra jumpy in the car. And at first I was like, I don't even know what my problem is. And I'm like, oh, well, anxiety and extra hormone shift from perimenopause. And not that I want to blame things on it, but you guys, there's too many things on these lists that I've been experiencing for it to not make sense for me and my age for there to be a connection. Um, inability to tolerate alcohol. Yeah, my body doesn't really metabolize. Um, and I mean, maybe doing sober October permanently is a good thing for me. But if you notice that uh, if you do consume some alcoholic beverages and you can't have much of anything anymore, it's because your body's not breaking it down correctly. Fun. Um, what else? Alcohol, anxiety, acne, change in periods. Oh, new body odor. I've been using natural deodorant for years. Literally just like the crystal mineral stick that you get wet and then rub it on your skin. No problems, none whatsoever. Even when I was still teaching a bunch of fitness classes, I was using that and totally cool. Until <laughs> probably maybe a year or two ago, I know, started noticing like I would stink. And I thought, well, I'm using this deodorant and I'm using it multiple times a day. And again, not really drastically changed anything else in my diet or much else of what I've been doing. So the only thing that made sense for that also, new body odor. And again, women my age that I've been talking to, I mean, when I've shared this information, they're like, oh my gosh, especially the new body odor that makes so much sense. I just think of the reverse. When you start going through puberty, all of a sudden you stink. Well, I guess when you go through the reverse of puberty, now all of a sudden you're going to stink again. Uh, um, there may be some others that I'm missing, but that's like a, a general overview of the ones that I've been experience, so experiencing. So those ones have stuck with me the most. What I can tell you is from everything that I've been reading, once I made this connection, there are so many ways that you can help support the body without having to do freaking hormone replacement therapy because you guys, I haven't dug a ton into hormone replacement therapy yet, but my gut instinct is telling me it's bad. And I don't do well on hormones. The few times I ever tried any hormone birth control, it went terrible every time. And so I really don't want to go that route. So I'm looking holistically into what are the best options. And one really cool thing that I found for on multiple resources was ashwagandha. If you have not heard of the herb ashwagandha, look it up. Basically, I have a supplement form that I had here that I wasn't using regularly. So I just pulled it out and now I'm using it every single day right now. But it, mine has ashwagandha and saffron, which are both two really freaking powerhouse natural um, supplements that you can use. Also phenomenal for perimenopause. Ah. Um, I don't want to jinx it. I will knock on wood this time, but since I started the ashwagandha saffron combo and been adding it to my daily shake packed full of all kinds of like, kick-ass stuff, I haven't noticed the body odor thing as much. Again, I don't want to jinx it, but I think it's helping right now balance out the hormone fluctuations that are taking place in with the body odor and some of the anxiety I've been feeling calmer during the day um and I wouldn't say you guys I have like any kind of crazy anxiety issues but I mean we all have problems we're all little nuts in the head let's be real okay we all have our moments <laughs> but ashwagandha is just a really calming supplement too it can help promote good sleep so if you're having trouble sleeping oh that's another thing with perimenopause uh, night sweats Ooh, fun. Not hot flashes, friggin' night sweats. Um, hot flashes are going to be way more associated with menopause, but that's not to say in perimenopause they can't already start happening as well. So ashwagandha, 
with saffron supplement. It is freaking bomb. Um, and the one I use actually has a peach green tea flavor, but I added into my protein shake that's vanilla and strawberry and then the peach flavor. And it's really, really good, but you can actually have it on, on its own. So if you do like peach green tea in general, it's going to be a way healthier version for you than the bullshit peach green tea at Starbucks. That's not good for you at all. What's the other thing I found? Oh, we talked, we haven't talked about castor oil packs yet. I promise that podcast episode is coming. I talked about coffee and those coffee and those amazing for all kinds of things too. So you're helping your liver detoxify, which also then helps balance out your hormones because your liver is functioning. Like you guys, all the systems are connected together. Like you can't just think that your uterus now is starting to not work and that's just happening there. It's your whole endocrine system. Your hormone system is tied into so many things. Your pancreas, uh, your pituitary, your th thyroid, your adrenals, your God, like you guys, the systems of the body are designed to work cohesively. So if one thing is off, it's going to throw the others off. And the one thing throwing everything off may not be the thing that you even think is causing your issues because they're all freaking interconnected. But castor oil packs, which I will talk more about, um, when you play, when you use the castor oil pack, basically you take this, you can use just a piece of flannel or a pack. I, I've partnered with a company that has a kit that you just buy the kit and it's freaking kick ass. But you wrap it around your liver, you put the castor oil on the pack, put the pack with the castor oil side down, wrap it around your liver, okay, the upper right quadrant of your torso. And that castor oil soaks down into your liver and does magical things. <laughs> but really though, like things in nature are designed to help our bodies heal. But the castor oil does the same thing. It helps with detoxifying the liver, just like coffee enemas. So I've actually been doing both. Castor oil packs, probably three to five times a week. Coffee enema once a week. Infrared sauna, three to five times a week. I'm doing everything right now in my power to help my body's system. I am not a doctor. Do not take this as medical advice. Go find your big pharma pedal pharma prescription pushing doctor to get their approval if you really care because I can't give you medical advice. Now that that's out of the way, um, you guys haven't been to the doctor in years. I do my own research and test dummy stuff on myself. Clearly, there are contraindications to doing coffee enemas, to taking ashwagandha. Ashwagandha actually can help uh, lower blood sugar levels. So if you are diabetic and taking insulin and using ashwagandha, please be cautious because it can naturally lower your blood sugar levels. And if you're lowering it with ashwagandha and your insulin at the same time, you really want to pay attention to that one. So that one I do know off the top of my head, but always double check on everything. If you are on a prescription medication for sure so to see what contraindications are, because I do not know contraindications for prescription meds. So that is a fucking complicated world. But for insulin with ashwagandha, if you're type two and not using insulin, ashwagandha is going to be your friend because it's going to help lower your blood sugars naturally and potentially get you in a much better space. Coffee on us. You look that up, do it on your own. I'm not advocating how to do that, but I did do a whole episode. So go back and find the coffee in the episode to get more details. Castor oil episode, I promise is coming. It is coming because they're freaking phenomenal. But to get more information on castor oil packs right now, you could go to Queen of Thrones dot com slash sues the boss i'll put the link somewhere in here where you can find it but they have tons of great references but stay tuned for that episode from me so i can tell you a little more about my experience too but you guys there are things you can do to help support your body and your hormones and just overall general health that are not rocket science use things found in nature um and my ladies who may have just now realized you're in perimenopause i'm here for you reach out and the ladies who have already gone through it if you have any words of wisdom please share them with us because we need them and it's not something i feel like 
is really talked about enough, but we can help each other so much by sharing our experiences with each other to give each other tips and insight and support. So there you go, perimenopause. There's a little just brief touch on it. Hope you found this helpful. If you do, please share it with any old ladies out there that you think might find some of this information helpful. Like, subscribe, share on YouTube, Anchor, Spotify. You can find me on Instagram. Oh, I officially have an Instagram. Um, Sue Rogers Unedited. I'm finally making just a separate Instagram account for clips from the podcast. So Sue Rogers Unedited on Instagram or Balanced Day Life on Instagram. And uh, Facebook also Balanced Day Life. If you need any more info from that and any, any other direct links, go to my website, www.balancedaylife.com and have an awesome freaking day.